I was recently commissioned to paint a picture um, by a client um, uh, of autumn trees, really, on Gallywood Common. So I w took a wander around and I found these lovely old oak trees, not actually on the common, and um, as you can see, the way the branches and trunk area is much darker than the um, autumn leafing and where the autumn leafing overlaps or stands in front of the branches they disappear then they appear again where there's a gap in the leafing so this is what you know you have to bear in mind when you paint these subjects so the first thing you do is to put the leafing on then you paint the trunk and the branches to suit the leafing you've actually um, painted on. The client uh, wanted um, three, uh, four, four figures, so I made a pencil sketch, and uh, it was a special um, request. In as much as um, I think there is some sort of reconciliation between the family, and this needed to reflect that. So I tried to put that into the scene as well. So I introduced the figures and uh, I'm going to show you how I painted this using watercolour. Well, I started with an outline drawing in pencil onto a bocking, uh, bo uh, bocking for watercolour paper, 140 pound knot surface. Um, I did tape around the outside so we get a nice edge when I remove that tape. Um, but it's not actually held to the uh, board itself, only in the four corners. It's not taped down all round. I used cadmium lemon and a little cadmium red to produce an orange effect. Now I didn't damp the paper first, but I used a mop brush um, number four mop brush and use the wash of color to actually damp the paper so I, if you notice i keep reloading with water bef particularly before i add more paint uh, the more paint you add the darker the color the more water you add the lighter the color i added more ca uh, more of the two colors there a little more uh, lemon yellow rather than the red uh, to give a little bit more yellowy glow. I wanted a bit of light coming from more or less from behind those trees on the right. Uh, I've only painted down as far as the lower area of the trees to start with. Now I'm putting the same colour onto the track and notice how fast the track tapers. I'm adding a little bit more yellow, cadmium lemon, and uh, just scratching across the surface for the to start the the bank effect either side. A little bit of a bank either side. Um, and that really um, sets the scene really. Now I want to work wet into wet. So I immediately then start added more of the cadmium red to try and get that light effect. So while the paint paper is still damp, this is redamping the paper. So that's always a good thing to do. <coughs> Excuse me. To actually redamp the paper with the colour as you lay it on. That way it keeps nice and uh, um, nice and damp for wet washes. Now I'm considering uh, my next move and um, I've used a little cobalt blue really, it was a little Windsor in there, uh, a little um, ultramarine in there, mainly cobalt blue and I'm picking out the very distant areas. Now I know it looks quite dark but as always as watercolour dries, it dries um, at least a tone or two lighter. Now to that blue, I'm adding raw sienna. But I've not gone right into the blue. I've pulled to one side 
because I want the raw sienna to dominate. And now I'm painting the distant sort of far depth of the wood really. And the thing is with distant trees, whether they be autumn, summer or winter even, um, they're always less intense in the distance. So I've only used raw sienna and little cobalt in there to give me a glow to the autumn leafing because that's the whole point of this scene, uh, picking up the autumn colours. Now as I've gone to the top, I'm gradually losing the blue from the brush. Um, so I've added more raw sienna and stroking that in to give a very rough impression of distant leafing on trees. It's all wet into wet, it's all gonna, gonna go very, very soft. If you think about it, when you look into the depth of a wooded area, you end up seeing more sort of blurred images. Now I've added burnt sienna there. If we keep all these distant impressions of leafing and clumps of leafing if I keep all that um, particularly um, wet into wet then it will always come up uh, nice and soft we can put the hard edges on later the more uh, local leaf work on the trees but this is all the background stuff this is this is what you have to paint first if you try and paint the foreground trees right on top of the white paper, you end up with lots of gaps. So you always do the soft background areas first, the sky, any uh, trees in the distance. Now I'm adding cobalt blue again and picking up the real depth of the wood, um, trying to get a blue, sort of bluey green, distant feel to the dark distant leafing and hedging really it's mainly hedging a bit more blue added always important to add as much blue as you can although it doesn't want to be completely blue and if you notice I drop it into the damp paper but of course it um, it soon disperses within the other colours so you get a lovely variety of warm and cool colours and that's what I'm looking for to get that depth Now as I work my way to the higher part, I'm introducing a little cadmium lemon with a little burnt sienna to try and get um, a little fresher colour. No more blue added. So we're getting a little bit of the fresher colour. So I suppose you could say that these are the distant um, clumps of leafing that, that are slightly in shadow, slightly darker. You have to be very careful when you get to the centre where I've just painted. It's it's okay uh, to paint it, but once you've dropped it in and it's a blob of dark colour, then you can't really get it back. So you have to be very careful. Outside edges would be fine, but the centre there where the light is, once you kill that light. Now I've added burnt sienna to the tip of the point of the brush, and that's coming up pretty strong on the left. I just dip into the colour look and then pick it up and drop it in. And that's the key to uh, to getting these nice fresh um, impressions of leafing that's already fallen. It needs to be a bit stronger as we come into the foreground. So I've gone in with um, quite a lot of heavy colour there. And now I'm running across the, because some of that leafing lays onto the track itself. So I'm scratching across quickly. The brush is running out of paint. So I'm not going to get really um, deep colours. And then I'm pressing hard and pulling off to get the feeling of a track really. 
Although I painted across with the initial colour, I'm painting down and holding the contour of the track uh, for the finish. Now before that completely dries, I'm using a half inch flat and diving, just damp, slightly damp, diving straight into cadmium yellow with a little cobalt blue, but it's mainly cadmium yellow to get a nice um, sort of um, yellowy, um, rich yellow colour because the leaves have turned that colour um, certainly more in the depth of the wood and if you notice I'm using a sort of like a, a I'm twisting the brush using the side of the brush trying to give the impression of leafing overhanging into those lighter areas now it's still damp so you can see that it will it will blur um, you're not going to get hard edges still um, that's the thing with working quick um, with these sorts of subjects you really need to add um, speed to your techniques um, but of course you can't do speed until you've um, got the techniques um, um, off slowly really so um, pays to practice this in smaller subjects so that you're not covering such a large area now I did add a bit of burnt sienna to it now I'm adding a touch of Windsor blue and I'm using more of a stippling sort of technique twisting the brush all sorts of different brush strokes going in there to try and give that impression of leafing it's still only the more distant little bit middle distance but these are by no means the foreground leafing these will gradually disperse as you can see they're getting soft edge the hard edge when you drop them into water, uh, damp paper but they, are, they become softer edged once you um once they begin to dry <coughs> a bit more burnt sienna gone in there um <coughs> Now you have to be a bit careful when you come to that centre area and any light areas. Don't go over too much of the lighter areas. You can you can actually see where the underpainting has, you know, it looked very, very dark, but it's dispersed quite a bit into the white paper. And um, now you're getting very soft, distant feel to the wood. <coughs> bit of burnt umber now I'm going back into that other area in places just to to try a bit of more burnt sienna going in a little bit more yellow cadmium touch of blue because I need a deeper color um, to paint the lower area where there's less light um, trying to get the feeling of light coming through the leafing but certainly in the lower area more where the bulk of the hedging and lower trees are then it's considerably darker and that will help the effect of light coming through but there again don't cover over all of those burnt sienna lighter areas or indeed the bluer areas leave some of those showing so what I'm doing I'm working from light through to dark but of course if you don't leave any of those light areas when you put the dark on then you'll, you've lost them forever really now I'm creating a little bush in the far distance now this is where you've got to be very very careful go over too far with that and you've lost it notice how the blue now shows depth particularly in the center at the distance area of the path If you notice I'm over painting the trunk areas, no real um, uh, leaving of white paper. If these have been birch trees, I probably may have even using this technique have needed masking fluid for those. Um, I added a little more burnt sienna and I'm picking up one, you know, lots of different techniques going in here. Um, it's almost getting a feel for the scene 
you know, I can't really explain. You've, what you've got to do really is to watch what I do and um, put it down in your own way because you, you will all have different ways of interpreting what I'm doing. And uh, that's what will make your scenes uh, individual, really. Um, every artist is different, just like handwriting. You watch how a C or a D is um, produced with a pen, and funny enough, you put it down in your own way. And that's individual to you. But of course, you've got to see how the techniques uh, are used to get the impression or knowing what you're actually trying to achieve. Now I added a little more cadmium, a little touch of raw sienna perhaps there, um, and I've pulled down a little bit, um, but um, basically a bit more raw sienna just to try and pick up while it's still damp. Don't want to get too close to them figures pretty tight on those figures although it's still damp so it will you know it looks very dark but it will die back considerably now I'm um, got to think here um, what am I going to do in the distance behind the figures or indeed on the bank where the foliage areas are little bit of overhanging touches there. I add a little cadmium to that. Try and get a little bit of green because there are still greens around, you know. Um, even in the depth of autumn, you can get some trees hold their green longer. Others turn very quickly. I've added quite a bit of blue and yellow now. Try and get feeling of deeper dark areas right in the depth of the wood and in many ways the darker I go with the depth of the wood the lighter the funnel of sunlight I think you can see already we're getting a funnel of light coming through from the through the tops of the trees a bit more yellow going in got to now try and attend to the bank area be a bit careful again um, you know working fast you can soon drop color in where you don't need it and lose that lovely light effect um, so restraint is always an important thing to think of when you're and of course the end result and it's only practice before you know what these brush strokes will mean in the final painting or the finished painting. <clears throat> a bit more cadmium as I come forward. All very autumny, nothing too vibrant in the greens. And some of that greenery and grass area enters into the track um, so I'm pulling that down into the edge of the track notice at the moment I'm not touching behind the figures that needs to be thought about at this stage uh, going in with a bit of cadmium now and a little bit of Windsor blue um, to pick out a little darker greens Down the bank. It's nice to have a little bit of greenery in amongst that. Trying to leave light areas. Going a little darker again. A little bit of burnt sienna gone in. That will really darken it. Notice I didn't put any more water with it. So as I say, more paint, less water. Gives you a darker colour. And as always, because it's wet into wet, speed is the is the key. Same three colours to get a really dark area on the left because I know that under the trees that will eventually be painted in we will have shadow 
So this is really the beginning of the shadow areas under the trees. <clears throat> now I'm scratching across the surface now and pulling a little bit of that in with a, this brush is quite dry now. So I'm just pulling a bit across. You can always rub it with your fingers if it, if it looks a little, little heavy. Um, just trying to give techniques of grasses. Um, another client did mention the, the ferns that stand up um, in the early autumn across the common. If you're enjoying watching this video and uh, the way it's, um, watching the way I paint this type of painting or indeed anything, uh, any of my paintings, please subscribe by clicking on the little logo in the bottom right hand corner. That way you will receive notifications when I upload more videos. Now what I'm doing now is um, adding, using the same colours as I did in the foreground, a little bit more burnt sienna, and I've, I'm stippling so the brush is quite dry, so that the hairs of the brush open up. And I just tap that onto um, the paper, and gradually, as it runs out of paint, you will end up getting a little more definition to the leafing. Notice how I'm running into those lighter areas, being careful not to completely cover those light areas, because if you do, it's all dark. Going in again, a uh, bit more Prussian blue, or Windsor blue, a bit more brown, no more water, and I'm stippling again the other side, just dotting on, and I'm turning the brush. They are, I'm, I'm now tapping the brush onto the palette, um, it's not good for the brushes, but it's the way to achieve these open brush techniques for use for stippling. The brush is quite open there and, and quite dry. The more you tap, the more the brush hairs open up, as you can see, and you get finer um, shapes of colour, which to me look very much like overhanging leafing. Now these are the darker areas, trying to be a little conservative with them, although fair, uh, lots of them at the top, bottom, sorry, top, left and right hand corners. But as you get into the more open area, they become less and less, so they're not as dense. Still quite dark. And these are really for the more local leafing, the foreground leafing for the larger trees. Very careful when we drop into the lighter areas. And tend to what I do to one side, I do to the other. May change colour, but trying to get a similar technique so that both sides of the, of the lane, both trees, actually um, match each other. Now, nothing worse than painting one side and then you can't shape the brush exactly the same for the other side and consequently you end up with um, uh, one strata of tree one side and a totally different tree the other. It can happen but it's not good I don't think for composition. Now I'm getting into the lighter area, could be very careful because I want plenty of areas for the, branch, for the trunk and branches to show. And I'm being very very careful as I head down into the center area, very careful. Now the paper is now, it's not completely dry, but it's drying off. So these brush strokes and brush marks actually stick to the paper more and they don't blur as much. And you, you can begin to see where I'm getting a bit of depth to the, to the leafing. You know, the, the, the ones I'm putting on now are clearly defined against the soft blurred distant areas and all of a sudden you've got yourself the feel of a distant wood. Um, now I'm trying to show a bit of undergrowth, uh, 
using all sorts of different techniques, lifting up before dotting and stippling again, um, just to vary it because I'm coming into the lower part of the wooded area, maybe some hedging, so you know I want that to to appear um, different shapes, um, leafing. There again, plenty. Notice I'm not using a great deal of water. So it's quite strong colour, quite strong paint. Trying to get a variety of techniques going in this lower area. I was a, a fine deal of dividing line when you come to put in your darks. How much darks do you put in? Notice how I'm really hitting the brush into the dark area to open up the brush hairs. And then it, then the, the, the hairs are then open, ready for when I produce the top half of the dense area. Now, just a little, well, quite a bit more blue, quite a lot of blue there. And notice how I dropped in cadmium, but didn't go back into the blue, because that cadmium holds in the point of the brush, because I had a lot of blue on the, on the uh, brush itself. And these are the things that I do subconsciously over the years I've developed that sort of feel for the colours knowing how much is on the end of the brush um, how dense it needs to be and this is you know I've got lots of Windsor Blue can use Prussian in the mix and that will really make a really dark colour just just rubbing the top so it gets a little heavy you can just soften the tops because obviously now um, the paint, uh, the underpainting is dry so to soften you've either got to damp again or rub with your finger depend on the technique that you need <clears throat> now using the same technique in a very dark mix I'm trying to show the Feel of ferns. I know they're quite green, but they're quite dark, so they could look like that. They're probably a little bit more sad at this time of year. Uh, in general, grasses really as well, I'm trying to show. Uh, I know the client did mention um, the ferns up on the common, which quite a feature really in parts of the common area along these um small tracks and roads and I'm just trying to pick up the fennel of some of these ferns or even grasses standing up into the lighter area so you put the darker area on first then you stipple in these ferns of grasses ferns and they obviously are smaller in the distance so always be aware of um, perspective you know even in this sort of you know buildings appear small as they go away into the distance so does leafing and um, undergrowth grasses ferns um, and do figures so that's and I'm just lifting them up into the light area from the dark area and that is pretty much as simple as that really every one of you will have your own little way of interpreting that but that's the way it's done I'm adding a little more red now a little cadmium red because that is the probably the darkest color that, that you can get um, obviously with very little water um, because that is the foreground and the real foreground dark areas that will be in shadow but there again you can see that I've left some little patches of I've not completely covered it there's white paper there's little browns um, 
all very um, suggestive really not trying to get rid of every bit of light area in that foreground and of course I'm introducing it into the track because it is a soft edge along that track some of the grasses and leafing have grown over or blown over so it's quite a track quite a rough track really it is a, a tarmac little area this Beekswall Lane um, but um, it's still not edged particularly well it's not a manicured common area it's allowed to grow and do its own thing to a certain extent which is a good now I've changed to a number four um, yeah a number four um, Rosemary & Co uh, brush that points number four round and I'm going to paint the figures now thought I'd get the figures in before I produce the um, trunk and branches and with figures I always try and vary the colours um, I'm putting the first one in the largest figure uh, the father as it were um, in a blue um, I suppose that's quite appropriate really being um, a male um, blues can be uh, a colour that anybody wears or no um, purely to give a bit of cool it's all very warm at the moment so you're going to need some cooler colours um, and these figures are actually walking away from us so we won't see any of the faces um, uh, it's all a matter of hair um, at the back of the head really and it's the shape of the figures notice how the head turns in towards the other figure which gives a bit of an indication that um, they may be talking to each other and um, now I'm putting in the legs now the legs are quite difficult some people find them very difficult um, but keep them close together and taper them down to uh, down to where potentially the shoes are um, but uh, nice to taper them uh, don't have them just don't have them wide all the way down that's a common fault now I'm using a different colour here for the lady figure on the right of the man figure produced in a similar sort of way more red in this one so you got red and a blue I like to have that and this one will have a dress or a skirt of some sort just use the wrong color there and this is got a tint of tint of a bluey color more or less a whiter dress with some um, got a bit of shadow really and I'll pull that down doesn't hurt if the coat blends with the dress always nice to have that soft gives a more better feel to the whole thing trying to put an arm just out so they're more or less just touching and in actual fact the color has bled into the blue because the two colors have gone together and I think that's good you know you don't actually have to put the arms together if they're just touching each other and the two colours merge it gives that blurred impression that they are holding each other's hands or in each other's arms or whatever you know or just very close together and the two uh, younger figures a um, little bit further down the lane these are running in front and they will be produced in um, 
a very similar way. Now comes the tree work and um, I'm using a number eight for this. Number eight round. Diving straight into the burnt sienna. Added a touch of Windsor Blue. It's a number eight round. And notice the way I'm starting painting the way the trees grow. Pulling up the trunk. Now, as I explained at the beginning of the, of the video, that where the overhanging leaf and shows or runs across the trunk, then you leave a gap. So you start with the trunk, then you leave a gap where the branches hang over, and then you continue to another area of, of, uh, of branches. So where the light areas are, you probably would see the trunk. And that really is the basic principle of painting these trees. Now I'm not going, it, it, it's fairly dark. Now this one, actually heads up fairly high before that hits a area of branches or leafing so that you see quite a little quite a lot of that trunk now i'm going in here with a little red and windsor and the burnt sienna because i would need these to be very dark Notice the way I'm pushing down and gradually lifting off. And that gives you the tapering to the trunk. Because trunks generally um, taper as they go up. I know some pine trees don't. But generally, you know, it depends on the strata of tree you're, you're looking at to paint. But always leave a gap where you see clumps of greenery. Or, sorry, it, this is autumn tone. But even on a, on a um, summer tree principle would be the same quite like you wouldn't see as much of a trunk because there'd be more leafing <clears throat> now if you notice I'm getting the main trunk areas in first before I attempt to paint the smaller areas the smaller branches now this is very dark winds are blue with cadmium red maybe a bit of burnt sienna in there because this is really close to us. Notice how the brush has run out of paint. Now it was a bit of luck. But you can rub it away with your finger. Because that gives an indication of light. Coming from behind. More or less blurring that trunk. So that really gives a feeling of more or less where this, the sunlight is really. Now I'm going to use um, a number four rigger brush. Now a rigger um is a long, fairly long haired brush and very thin um, and uh, it enables you to produce um, a reasonably thick line but also uh, a very thin line. In other words, if you push down on the brush you get the thick trunk, or sorry, the thick branch area where it leaves the trunk. Then you gradually lift off as you go away into the, into the um, smaller branches uh, on the outer edges so it's the harder you push the wider the line uh, the less you push the thinner more narrow lines and always try and if you want if you look at the tree you're painting and try and get that sort of movement to the branches um, they, they're not just dead straight and they always relate to the leafing so you know you have to really design your a tree in many ways um, to suit the leafing you've actually put on um, but obviously it has to be in a way that depicts that tree uh, that you're trying to uh, that you're seeing in front of you so you know but as always we use leaf gaps where the branches overhang the the leafing overhangs the branches so you know you must leave remember to leave gaps here and there and more in the dense area less on the outer edges but notice how i'm leaving gaps and and i'm holding the brush up and lifting off as i paint 
uh, creating a progressively narrow um, branch as I keep reloading because um, you know I don't want it to run out of too much paint uh, but on the other hand you know if you notice I reload when I do the larger branches but then as I do the smaller branches I leave it to run out of paint um, and that gives you those smaller lines really and use less weight just trying to now balance the thickness of the trunk to suit the branches I've put on. Now all the branches are in, I'm reverting back to the half inch flat uh, with a very strong mix of Windsor Blue and Indian Red. Uh, with a little cadmium in there and trying to get the the brush not using too much water for this trying to get the brush to to really open the hairs up for the final little um, touches of really dark leafing now we have to be very careful here um, I can be guilty as anybody else of overdoing this uh, these, la these last little dark areas um, and uh, it's so easy to do you do get carried away but uh, uh, I think that's sufficient so all the branches are in now we have the final shadow work now I'm using the half inch flat again now this is a mix of uh, winter blue and cadmium red more blue in this now and trying to get the feeling of using it's a flat because I can get a very small edge by using this, the corner of the flat or a wide area by pushing hard and getting the rest of the colour um, the, the hairs and spreading the colour now we get it we're getting shadow from the trees that run down the bank and up the other side it's all you know I, I didn't I, I didn't start off in the distance but now the brush is running running out of paint I can just head towards the figures uh, because obviously they have shadow and a little bit of shadow in the distance that's a little strong so I've took a little bit of color off and I've come back in again don't want to be too strong out there in the distance and that that's just where that bush is just um, creating just very weak shadows on the overhang so that's more bluey and of course there is a bit in the distance don't want to cover too much of that distance up um, just a little bit running across where the figures are um, notice how there's very little color behind the figures so they stand out in clear relief so it's all looking pretty good I'm going to mix now uh, a stronger mix so I'm going back in and notice how I'm pulling across very quickly when I get onto the track I soften it with my hand um, you know the light is coming from the right hand side and uh, uh, picking up more color more paint now to get a slightly darker color to be a bit careful another area where I can be over um, uh, keen with shadows and I do put them in a little heavy but I think overall you know I am one for strong shadows now I'm adding more blue and a little more red now to get a slightly deeper slightly more purpley color uh, for the foreground shadow and that is extremely dark as you can see but it will dry a tone or two lighter this is something that we should always remember um, you know it does look very very dark but um, hopefully and I've got my fingers crossed at this point that it will dry up and I'm dragging across the paper um, trying to get a, a dappled light effect there we are by using the side of the brush you know just there's lots of branches but they're all open so there you go that's um, pretty much it really the shadow works in and um, 
uh, I do hope you've enjoyed this video uh, as I say please subscribe click the link in the bottom right hand corner and uh, where you get notifications when I upload more videos we'll see you all again very very soon mm -hmm.